No matter how carefully you code, you're going to make coding errors. Things are going to go wrong. Errors will occur at runtime. And there are basically three types of errors, some at design time, some at runtime. There are syntax errors, that's where you just type the wrong thing. There's runtime errors where you, you cause things to occur that trigger runtime exceptions, like attempting to open a file that doesn't exist. You can also have logic errors, and these are the hardest to find, because these are places where you just make a coding error that compiles, doesn't trigger a runtime error, but it's got the wrong behavior. In this section, we'll take a moment and look at how you solve each of these debugging problems. To try out debugging, I'm going to create a new project. File, New, Project, and I'll create a console application again, and this time I'm going to create one named, well, it doesn't really matter what we call it, Debug Sample is as good as any. And within here, I think I'm going to rename this file, because I like to give it a special name, debugsample.vb. Okay, now we have our procedure main ready to fill in, and let's do that. Now again, I could, if I want, add an imports system statement here, but it's redundant. Visual Basic always adds the imports system for you, so even if you don't put it there, it works. Can't hurt to put it there, though. Within here, I'm going to write a procedure that's going to ask the user for a value and attempt to convert it to an integer, say it's their age, and then display information about them if they enter a value. Let's start by creating a variable, a place to put the value. I'll call it age value and declare it as an integer. And we'll describe later in the course exactly how you create variables. And you notice we've got a little green squiggle. And the green squiggle is telling us that we have a variable that we're not using yet. So you can delete it if you ever define such a green squiggle and you really don't want it to be there. Let's first ask for the user's age. And we'll do that by prompting the user using the console.write statement. It doesn't add a carriage return at the end of the line. Enter your age, a convenient way to prompt the user for a value. And then read the age. Age value equals we're going to call the console.readLine method, which reads the line and returns it back to us. But it returns back a string. And I want an integer. So I need to explicitly convert from one type to the other. Now, in Visual Basic, I must step aside a moment and mention that you have the option of allowing Visual Basic to implicitly perform conversions like this. It's an option you have in Visual Basic. As a matter of fact, if I go look in my project properties, under compile, option strict by default is off. Option strict being off means that Visual Basic will attempt to make those conversions for you. As a matter of fact, right here it says implicit conversion, no notification. It's just going to do it. I don't like that. If I'm converting data types, I want to know about it. So I turn option strict on in general, so that if I attempt to perform a conversion, the compiler complains. Let's try it. Let me save this and not do that. And now it complains. It wouldn't have with option strict off. You can control option strict on any file level. So I could have come up here and put in here option strict off if I want. And now it doesn't complain. I've overridden that behavior for this one file. If I remove it, we use the default setting, which is option strict on, and we get a complaint. So let's come here and perform that explicit conversion, and now everybody's happy again. OK, let's display the results. Display the correct statement, and let's do it. If age value is greater than 13 and age value is less than 20, then notice they put the end if for me in here, the end of that block. We'll discuss if statements in more detail elsewhere, but it's pretty clear what's going on. If those conditions are both true, then we'll run the code inside here. Console.writeLine, you, you are a teenager. We can add an else statement which says, if that wasn't true, let's run this code. Console.writeLine, 
you are and not a teenager or you are a real person because teenagers as you know live in a life all their own let's finish this up by prompting the user to press any key and then do a console.read key there we go there's our code now you may not have seen a number of the features of this procedure, but it's pretty clear what's going on. We're making a location where we'll put a value. We're getting a value from the user and putting it into that variable, making a choice based on the value of that variable and displaying different information depending on what the user entered. Let me save this and press F5 to run it. Same as debug, start debugging. If I enter 12, it works. Uh, that's interesting, but we'll come back to that. Let's try entering 18. Okay. And once again, 25, my real age. And we're a real person, great. Okay. So clearly the code has worked. Ship it. It finished. Well, there are problems. What if I press F5 once again to run it and enter my age is Ken. I'm not thinking real hard today and I enter the wrong value and we get something wrong. There it is. We got an invalid cast exception was handled. Okay. So we have to deal with that problem. Or we could pretend that will never happen again, shut it down and ship it anyway. But probably we ought to deal with that problem. Well, we'll fix that in a moment. Let's stop and look at other kinds of errors that can occur. For example, the simple coding error. You come along here and you change the value of this to age value one. Say, what happens next? Well, as soon as I leave that line, the Visual Basic Background Compiler notices that all those variables I have age value are orphaned. They aren't declared anywhere. So I could, of course, look and see what the problem is. I can also build this thing, and then I'll see here a list of all the problems. We can look at those and see what's going wrong. There's also an error list window. View error list gives me a list of each error and what I could do about it. Here it tells me age value is not declared and where it exists and everything. I double click, I go right to it. That's a great way to look at all the errors in your code. Of course, you won't have errors in your code. But when you do, you get this window, which lets you look at what the problem is. Visual Basic is awfully nice because here, I should be able to fix up the problem. At this point, to fix the problem, the answer is simple. I just come along, delete the one, and now everything's good again. That's the kind of error you might see when coding, and the errors window, the error list, will show you all those errors and help you fix them. What if you want a single step through code and see if there are logic errors in your code? Well, to do that, we can set a breakpoint in the code. Oh, did you notice here this yellow bar that indicates that the code has changed? When we save the code, the yellow turns to green. To set a breakpoint, I click in the margin. Or, of course, I could go to debug and toggle breakpoint or press F9. Any of those things work. Or just clicking in the margin toggles it on and off. That means at runtime, if we're debugging, when we hit that line of code, we'll drop back into the debugger and we can look at variables, modify code, single step through code, and so on. Let's just try it. To make this happen, you have to be debugging, which means you have to either press F5 or choose this menu option. If you choose this menu option, you won't hit your breakpoints, it'll just run full speed. Let's try it. I'll press F5. There we are. We hit that first breakpoint. We have a command window where I can enter commands to control the Visual Studio environment, an immediate window where I can look at various things about my application. For example, I could say, what is the value of age value? Well, there we go. I could change that, and it changed the value to 3. I really want it back to 0 to give it its default value. So we put it back to 0 like it was. OK. So at this point, I can single step. The way to do that is choose Debug, Step Into. Now, because I selected the Visual Basic keyboard settings, I see F8 as the keystroke here. If you're using the general development settings, that'll say F11. Either of them will work. 
within this environment, either F8 or F11, depending on what you're used to. Or you can just choose the menu item, Step Into. There's an option to step over, which will step over a procedure. For example, if you're calling a procedure you had written in your code, Step Into would step into that procedure, Step Over would just run at full speed depending on how you want to perform your debugging. Step out runs full speed to the end of the current procedure. Assuming that everything's okay in the procedure, step out just runs to the end of it. I want to step into, so I'll choose this option. Okay, you can also choose the toolbar icons here, which perform the same operations. At this point, I'll use the keystroke instead. Let's get the value from the user. Okay, I'll enter 27. Hit enter, and we're back in our code. And you can see the value of age value here is 27. You can change it in the immediate window, or you can change it right here. Let's take off a few years. Okay, no problem. The value is 18 now. If the value is between 13 and the value is less than 20, we're going to go here. Notice if I hover my mouse over the value, I can see the value there as well. I'll step into the procedure. It's going to print out, you are a teenager. I can use Alt-Tab to go over to the window and see the value there. Come back to Visual Studio and single step through the rest of the procedure. At any point, I can press F5 to run code full speed. And there we are. Okay, so we can single step through the procedure to see exactly what's going on while the code is running. When you're done debugging, you probably want to get rid of your breakpoints. You can either just go toggle each one off or choose Debug, Delete All Breakpoints. That removes them all. Unlike other environments you may have used in the past, Visual Studio remembers breakpoints between debugging sessions. So if you do want to save your breakpoints, just don't delete them, shut down, come back tomorrow, and the breakpoints are still there again. Okay, now if you remember, we had a problem in our code. The problem is if you enter a value that isn't a legal number, well, there isn't any number that isn't legal. If you enter a value that isn't a number, the code's going to fail with the runtime error because it's attempting to convert whatever you type into an integer. The answer is to use a construct known as a try catch block. A try catch block allows you to try running code, and if something goes wrong, you immediately proceed to the catch block where you can catch the error. So let's come along here and add this in. If I type try and hit enter, Visual Studio fills in the rest of that construct. What I want to do is take all the code that could trigger an error, cut it to the clipboard, and then paste it here within that try block. Okay, now we'll run the code inside the try block. Should something go wrong, we'll jump to the catch block where we're catching an exception. Exception is just a type built into the .NET framework, and EX is a variable of that type. The .NET runtime fills EX with information about what went wrong, and we could just do simply here, console.writeLine EX.message. And that will display the message. Okay. Well, hopefully, that will solve the problem. Should anything go wrong in this block of code, we'll find ourselves down here and run that code instead. Now clearly there are a million subtleties to this and we'll discuss them in a different section of the course, but let's just try this. Come along here and enter a good age. It works fine. Come along here and enter a bad age. And rather than complaining about it, it just tells us what went wrong and displays it on the screen. Now there are various exception types. Here we're catching the most generic. If I had instead of exception, trapped an invalid cast exception. That's a more specific, that's not the right exception, obviously. So let's see what the right exception is. I don't remember the type it is. Well, IntelliSense helps. Invalid cast exception, there it is, it was the right type. Invalid cast exception, we can catch that and display it. If we get anything else, then we can do something different altogether because catch ex ex as exception is the most generic type. This says if you get this specific exception, do this. If you get any other exception, I don't know, console.writeLine, something is really wrong. I don't see any way to generate that because we're going to catch the exception that we care about right here. Let's try it. 
Clearly, we caught the exception. We got to this block of code because we actually did raise a specific invalid cast exception. If we didn't have that, instead, we would catch it with the exception handling catch block. Now again, we'll talk more about catching exceptions later in the course, but I just wanted to show you the kinds of tools you have available to you to catch exceptions, and we'll use them throughout the various examples we'll show you in this course. So it's nice to see it now to see how that all plays out. By the way, there was a logic error, right? The logic error here, I'm sure a lot of you caught this already, is, uh, well, let's run it again. If I enter my age 13, I'm a real person? As far as I know, 13's a teenager. How can that be? If I run it with 14, works fine. What's the problem? Well, right here, we've compared the age value to being greater than 13. That either needs to be greater than 12 or greater than or equal to 13. That's a logic error. And there's no way that Visual Studio could have found that error for us. You had to deal with it yourself by running the code and investigating the behavior of the application based on the code you'd written. So we've looked at various types of errors here. We've looked at syntax errors. By changing the variable name, we had a syntax error. We looked at logic errors here. And we looked at runtime errors, where this conversion failed. We handled that by adding this try catch block.